Good evening, everybody. The music fan is here, and I don't want to wait before the dream is over. I'm going to make it mine. Oh, I, I know it. I'm going to make it mine. Yes, I'll make it all mine. Was that not a good enough clue for you? How about this? Well, I won't hesitate no more, no more. It cannot wait. I'm yours. All right. Thank you, God, by now. I am back with another Are You In? And this time we are looking at Jason Mraz's newest album entitled no. Now for those of you who don't know who Jason Mraz is, and I'd be shocked if a lot of you don't know him, but Jason Thomas Mraz is a American singer-songwriter from Mechanicsville, Virginia. Yes, there's actually a place called Mechanicsville. Who knew? Uh, his previous albums include Waiting for My Rock at the Come in 2002, Mr. A to Z in 2005, We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things in 2008, Love is a Four-Letter Word in 2012, and Yes in 2014. Now, I really, really, really like this guy. I really enjoy his music. I didn't get into him like many until his third album, We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things, particularly on the song I'm Yours. My dad used to play it constantly when it came out, and I didn't really see the appeal of it until I actually sat down and took a listen to the album. And it is honestly one of my favorite albums of all time. It's front to back, it's phenomenal. You have so many great songs, like I'm Yours. And if you haven't heard this whole entire album and just know I'm Yours, you need to check out that album. If you love singer-songwriter, if you love interesting wordplay, if you love interesting love songs, really interesting arrangements, all of it's there. Going from Make It Mine to Lucky with Colby Kelhate, a beautiful, beautiful song. There's just, just so many beautiful songs on there. A Beautiful Mess, If It Kills Me, Coyotes, Only Human. One of the first songs I learned on guitar and constantly play it to this day is Live High, which is a phenomenally easy song. It's such a beautiful one with so much imagery in the lyrics. There's Dynamo Volition, which is so much fun to sing. If you if you know that whole entire song, it, it's a tongue twister and it's it's great. There's Butterfly, a beautiful, fun, flary Latin song. A lot of these songs ha like are some of my favorite love songs. When it comes to a song like If It Kills Me, which is talking about someone who has loved someone for a very long time, but they're with somebody else. Or A Beautiful Mess, where this this relationship shouldn't be working, but it does because we, we make it work. Lucky, which is literally talking about loving your best friend. A lot of really catchy and interesting song, a lot of really good wordplay and so much great imagery. Overall, it's one of my favorite albums of all time because of that. But, you know, even his first album, Waiting for My Rocket to Come, has some great songs on there. Curbside Prophet, Absolutely Zero, which is a cheesy but beautiful song nonetheless. I'd Do Anything, Who Needs Shelter. The second CD, don't know as much of it. I don't think I've listened to it fully, but I love wordplay. I love Geek in the Pink, it's such a fun, goofy song. You get Life is Wonderful. A lot of great songs on that one as well. Even on the ones I don't know as well, Love is a Four Letter Word, there's still at least some great songs on there, 93 Million Miles. And of course, one of the most beautiful songs he's ever written in I Won't Give Up. It doesn't have the wordplay, but it has some beautiful sentimental lyrics. And I, that's what I've loved about Jason Mraz is that he's had a lot of songs that I can tune into and like feel everything that he is saying. I think he says a lot of things much better than a lot of songwriters out there. And his wordplay is top notch on a lot of things. Now, I haven't listened to Yes, it kind of went under my radar and I haven't heard much about it, but at least with Yes and this album, he has included a all-female indie rock folk band with him called Rain Jane, which their members are My Bloomfield on cello, glockenspiel, and high screen guitar, as well as marimba, uh, papoose, and vocals. Becky Gebhardt 
on bass, upright bass, and sitar. Chaska Potter on electric guitar, mandolin, ukulele, and vocals. And Mona Tavakoli on drums, percussions, and violin. So when, out of nowhere, earlier this year, I heard the song, Have It All. Just dropped out of nowhere. And I was super excited because it was a long time since I've heard something from Jason Mraz. It felt a little bit like I'm yours, but it was fun to hear him again and to have that upbeat nature to his song. And it made me very interested in his newest album. I checked it out and here's how I feel about it. It's weird. It has a lot of what I like from We Sing We Dance We Steal Things as well as from My Rocket to Come. If you went through this album you see a lot of similarities. First one being of course the second song on the album, Have It All, which is right on the same space of where I'm Yours was on the third album. And it feels similar, it has this very simplistic arrangement, it has some you know, choruses with a lot of different harmonies and a lot of different voices on there. I will say though, in terms of the the two, this one feels a little bit more poppy and it feels a little bit more simplistic in comparison to I'm Yours. Maybe that's just because I've had I'm Yours stuck in my head for 10 years, but to me it feels a little bit more poppy and the, the wordplay isn't as good, even though there is some interesting parts, but you know, always having this may you, may you, may you, it, beginning at each of the sentences kind of takes away from that wordplay. But still nonetheless, a nice song and one of the better ones on the album. You also get More Than Friends, which is with Megan Trainer, and the third spot, which again, going back to We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things, is where Lucky was with uh, Colby Kelly. So it's, it's funny that the comparisons are still there. This one, again, talking about a someone who is in love with their friend and wants to be more than friends. This one, in comparison to Lucky, this one is definitely one of the most popish songs on the album. And, you know, that would be the case because it's Megan Trainer there. She is known for doing pop songs. But I would say that at least it still has that acoustic feel to it and it gives... Jason Mraz, his voice, rather than trying to change him completely. Though, again, it is one of the more mainstream songs on the album. It'll probably be all over the mainstream radio. It's not a bad song. It's just, again, because of it, it feels a little bit more simplistic. It feels a little less intimate than some of his other love songs. And then the final song on the album has a kind of a feel of A Beautiful Mess, one of the longer songs, one of the slower songs, with this more of a developed arrangement as comparison to the other songs on the album. This one being six minutes, which is one of the longest songs that he has written, and it's a beautiful one. It's it's a simplistic song about talking about love is the answer and how we do everything that we can for love. And even though the lyrics are simple, the melody is beautiful, the harmonies on the chorus are very nice, it builds very well, it has some interesting string lines that add depth to the song. And overall, even though it's six minutes, I, I love all of it. It's it's my favorite song on the album. Definitely worth the time. Even though it's like literally one sixth of the album, because this album is 10 tracks long in 37 minutes. This is about one sixth of the album, but it's worth the time. Now, there are a couple songs that feel like they could have been off of Waiting For My Record To Come. Those being Sleeping The Dream, definitely feels like it could have been on the first album. It's one of these in the, in the span of three that has this more acoustic sound and has a little bit of drum, but that's basically it. It's a very nice song. I like the melody. I like some of the harmonies on there. I like a particular part with this nice harmony of the, the G chord at the end of the second chorus and Jason Mraz is singing the F sharp, which would be the major seventh. Really nice touch. I, I think it's a, a very nicely building song and even though it's not one of my favorites it's still a pleasure to listen to. The other one feeling like it could have been on the first album is Better With You is again another one of these more acoustic songs It has these this drum part that is mostly just brushes on a snare drum which sounds like it could have been on one of the songs on the first album. What I really like about this is the particular chord progression that he uses throughout the song. The first part being in a 
D minor, then G, then C, then A minor. So it's And then, what I like about this song is kind of like I talked about on the Frank Turner review, on the song Common Ground, this song uses the same thing, but a review uses this idea of a C chord, and then it goes D over C, and it goes F over C, and then back to C. So, it goes, I'm better with you, I'm better with you. And then it goes to an F over C, and then it goes back to C, and then that repeats itself, and then it goes to the, the C sharp idea real quick before going to back to D minor. I think it's a really interesting idea that's thrown into a pretty simple song. I like the use of the falsetto that he uses on here as well. Uh, overall, a, a very beautiful song. One of these three acoustics that are really beautiful. And then the last one being no plans which is this very simple song that is only two, about two and a half minutes long i i love the sentiment of it it's a, literally the only real acoustic song on this album with literally just him and an acoustic guitar i wish it was a little bit longer but i love the sentiment of the the, the song and i definitely will maybe sometime cover it in the near future We'll see. And then there's a couple other that I haven't talked about, which kind of fits into their own little category. Let's see what the night can do is the opener on the, the album. And it has tinges of Make It Mine, if you will. It has the idea of the song as it is. And then it has this color change in the middle. So what I'm talking about is at the beginning, you have this. So it's a G with using the bass, the F sharp. E minor to C to G D. And then the chorus is E minor C G D E minor C A D. E minor, C. So the chorus itself is pretty simple using, you know, a usual poppy progression. But then it gets into this F to C, G. Then F, then A, then D. So, in particular, we're in the key of G, right? So, E minor, C, D, we're perfectly in there. Once you get to this F, that doesn't fit this, the G scale. So, it has this nice little touch, kind of like on Make It Mine, you have it mostly in C, right? But when you get to the, the bridge of... Time means everything this time is plenty I am balancing Carefully and steady and melody and energies that everyone's admitting That itself is not in the key of C. So it kind of has these parallels where you are having this pretty straightforward song and then taking it into a different feel of a different color change. I'll say in comparison, this one is a little bit more poppy and a little bit more simple, but it's a nice song. It builds very nicely at the end, especially with these harmonic chords that he does at the first part of the outro. Uh, I, it's one of my favorite songs and it's a beautiful intro. And then finally, we have three songs, two of them fitting this more of a fun, feel kind of like with Butterfly or with Geek in the Pink. One of them being Unlonely, it's the one where he is using the most like wordplay in there, a lot of very fast paced singing rap ideas. I will say it doesn't hit the marks of say like Dynamo Volition or Butterfly 
or Geek in the Pink, but it's still a really, really fun song and one that it's great to hear it on this album. I was waiting for that type of fun song for a little bit, but it, it got there. I will say it does feel a little bit more simplistic in comparison to other stuff, but I think the funness of it excels a little bit more than the simplistic arrangement, if you will. And then you also get Might As Well Dance, which is this more bluesy, folky, country kind of feel, but it does have that fun feel to it with the words as well, where it's talking about someone who is flirting with someone at the bar or someone at a dance club and being like, you know, we have nothing to lose, so we might as well dance, and then, you know, seeing where the night goes from there. I think it's a really, really fun song and one of the again highlights on this album i'll say the worst song on this album is making it up it doesn't really do much for me it's one of the more it's the most simplistic arrangement on the album and the lyrics aren't great just doesn't really bring much to the table so overall you have a lot of really really fun songs that kind of stem from like ideas from past albums and still holds its own i will say in terms of love songs they're, they aren't the most amazing. I do love Let's See What The Night Can Do. I really like Unlonely, a song where it's talking about two people who are have been loners all their life, so why not try to make some fun with it? Better With You is an all right one. It's basically just talking about missing someone from afar and feeling knowing that they're better with this person when they're around. I really, 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 really love the, the simplicity and the beautifulness of No Plans, talking about literally spending a day with a loved one and just making sure that they are the only thing that they think about, especially in a, uh, in a world where we have so many other things that we need to take care of, finding that simplistic moment of literally just lying in bed and hearing someone breathe, you know, and just watching someone and being with them. A beautiful sentiment. Sleeping the Dream, not as great on the, on the love song front. It's literally talking about someone who is waiting for someone to come back. I guess it kind of might be like the other side of Better With You, where this person is waiting for someone to come back. You know, not, not a bad song. I just don't think that it matches as well as some of these other love songs. Love is to the answer. Kind of cheesy, but I love it. It's a very simplistic and very beautiful song. And the, the flirtatiousness of Might As Well Dance, also great. The only ones that aren't really love songs, I would say, is making it up. We're talking about making up as we go along in life, as, you know, we become parents and grandparents and stuff like that, and no one really telling us what we really need to do. All in all, really, really fun album. Uh, really beautiful album at times. I don't think it hits the highs of some of these other albums that I love. I think it's, I still love Waiting For My Rock To Come, and I definitely love We Sing, We Dance, We Seal Things much more. I think that this one doesn't have as much diversity in sound, and I think that's kind of its problem in comparison to We, D we Sing, We Dance, We Seal Things, where it had a Latin song. It had a uh, more electronic song. It had this more funky song with Dynamo Volition. It had this beautiful ender and it, it has parts of those but I think it doesn't necessarily ever merge more than this acoustic feel or these poppy feels. It never gets to more than that other than love is still the answer. Oh, Still though, it's only 37 minutes long. It's a 10 track CD and a lot of these songs are great. I would only say for me, Making It Up is the only one that I probably wouldn't listen to again. I still like More Than Friends even though it's poppy. I think it's a lot of really good stuff and it's nice to see him come back after four years and being able to make something nice. So if you like this more folky acoustic sound, if you like good wordplay, if you like good love songs, check this out. I will say the wordplay isn't as great as some of his other albums, but it's still fun. A lot of his songs are still heartfelt. And I, you know, you can definitely feel the tenderness of every one of these songs. So that's my time. If you like this album or this video, of course, give it a like. Tell me what you like or hate about this album or other albums you'd like me to review. Share this with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and most importantly, just keep on watching my videos. So this one ran a little bit long. So instead, I'm going to be putting up a update video for the rest of this year. I have a couple of ideas that I'm throwing out. And yeah, so keep in watch for that as well as another video tomorrow. It'll be the one finishing up from last week and then I'll be on to this week. So until then, this is The Music Fan signing off.